In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Affliction Warlock in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, the best talents, the best glyphs, the best gear, the best professions, and of course, the best macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with skill capped quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now, as with most classes, human is going to be the best option if you're playing Alliance. The double damage trinket is honestly just too good to pass up. Now, this is because of Will to Survive, which allows you to break out of any crowd control on a two-minute cooldown. And as a result, you can equip two damage trinkets instead of one, which can be used to snapshot your dots. Now, for Horde, you have two options to choose from, and your best option is going to be Orc. The stun reduction provided by Orc is very powerful and can easily be the difference between winning and losing a game. Blood Fury and the extra pet damage is also a nice bonus. Undead is another viable option if you're wanting to play Horde, as the ability to break out of Fears is extremely valuable. Fear has a high damage threshold in Cataclysm, so this functions as kind of a mini trinket. While Horde does have some solid options, most Warlocks are going to find themselves on the Alliance playing human. Talents work slightly differently in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you're going to need to know about it. There are two builds that you can choose from, and this will largely depend on what class you're playing with. The first talent build is the damage build. You're gonna skip some of the defensive talent options such as Demonic Embrace in order to pick Dark Arts. Dark Arts increases the damage of your pets and can be a substantial DPS increase over the duration of the arena. We also drop a point out of Dark Embrace for a little less overall healing to get Shadow and Flame for a chance to proc Spell Crit. This build is best used when playing with another caster where you don't anticipate being the kill target. Our second talent build does just the opposite though. We're going to drop some of the more offensive talent options and pick up the defensive talents. As you'll notice, Dark Arts was swapped for the stamina buff on Demonic Embrace, and we get an additional point in Dark Embrace for more drain life healing. As you can imagine, this is best played when you do expect to be the kill target, such as when playing with a melee. Now, technically there is a third build, but this is limited to 2v2. You're going to drop a lot of important talents for survival, but this build will deliver the highest possible damage. Now, you're going to notice we lose Demonic Rebirth, so if you play with this and your pet dies, you're going to likely not be able to resummon it. It is not recommended to play with this build outside of 2v2. Along with talents, the glyph system has changed slightly in Cataclysm as well. Now you're going to have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone and the same for all builds, but there is one small adjustment you can make in the major glyphs, which we're going to cover a little bit later. Glyph of Haunt simply increases the bonus damage provided by the ability. Glyph of Unstable Affliction is a nice quality of life boost as it reduces the cast time of this spell by 0.2 seconds. Now this doesn't sound like much, but it is nearly a 15% reduction in cast time. Glyph of Corruption functions the same as the Nightfall talent and, in fact, it stacks with Nightfall, giving you a higher chance to proc an instant Shadow Bolt. Your builds are going to have the same three major glyphs, Howl of Terror, Shadow Flame, and Soul Swap. Glyph of Howl of Terror provides a cooldown reduction for your AoE fear. Glyph of Shadow Flame makes Shadow Flame apply a 70% slow. 
This can be extremely useful when you have to kite. And finally, we have Glyph of Soul Swap. This puts Soul Swap on a 30 second cooldown, but it leaves your original dots on the target rather than removing them. As an alternative, you can drop Glyph of Howl of Terror for Glyph of Healthstone. This increases the healing of Healthstone and can be good in situations where you don't need the extra fear. Finally, our minor glyphs are not too important, but they can have a slight impact on the game. Glyph of Curse of Exhaustion extends the range of this curse by 5 yards. This can help land much-needed slows when kiting. Glyph of Health Funnel reduces the pushback by 100% when you're channeling Health Funnel. None of our other minor glyphs are important, so you can slot in whichever one you want for the third. In this case, we've slotted in Glyph of Subjugate Demon. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Now let's talk about our largest offensive cooldown, which seems to change names every single expansion, Demon Soul. Coming in at a two minute cooldown, Demon Soul can really pack a punch, increasing our dot damage by 20% for 20 seconds, if you're using a Fell Hunter, that is. And if you're not using a Fell Hunter because you desperately need to use an Imp to dispel traps, this button will only really serve as dispel protection unless you're hard casting Shadow Bolts because you haven't watched our sustained priority guide. Like all other buffs in Cataclysm, Demon Soul will not affect dots that are currently out. So when you use this ability, make sure you have Soul Swap available so you can press Demon Soul first before exhaling. And then refresh all those dots you have up on other targets so they can benefit from the 20% increased damage. Now with that same thought process, we're also going to be looking to use this button very early in the opener so we can stack our trinket modifiers to get the most damage possible on our dots. Now sadly, Demon Soul is purgeable though, so we do need to make sure we're able to cover it when facing a class with an offensive dispel. So just make sure that when you pop it, you have at least a few buffs the enemy will need to cycle through if they want to try and take it off. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in slot gear for season nine. First up, let's go over stat priority. First up, you're going to want as much intellect as possible, and you're going to naturally acquire this through your gear. After that, the highest priority is hitting the 4% hit cap. This ensures that your abilities don't miss. Nothing is honestly more frustrating when you're about to win the game and then your killing blow just completely misses the target. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This is going to ensure that your spells don't miss. Then you'll want at least 3000 resilience, although we highly recommend over 3500 resilience. After that, you'll want haste. Now, there's no specific breakpoint you're looking for here, but rather you want to stack this literally as high as possible. Crit and Mastery are relatively low value here. In fact, you're going to end up reforging nearly every single piece to haste that doesn't have haste onto it. When reforging, do keep in mind that you don't want to drop out of the 4% hit cap. In Season 9, all of your best in-slot gear will come from PvP. Affliction Warlock is a common kill target and you'll be thankful to have the extra resilience. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Fell Shroud set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Fell Weave Cowl, Amos, Raiment, Hand Guards, and Trousers. We're running 5 set just due to the set's stats being optimized for our breakpoints. For your off pieces, you're going to want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion for our spell penetration. Your bracers are going to be Vicious Gladiator's Cuffs of Accuracy, Vicious Gladiator's Cord of Accuracy in the Waste Slot, and finally, to round out off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Treads of Alacrity in the boot slot. For your weapons, you're going to want to be using Vicious Gladiator's Spellblade in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's Endgame in your offhand. The wand slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Touch of Defeat. For your jewelry, you're going to want to pick up Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Alacrity. For your rings, you want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Accuracy and Cruelty. And finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity on the Horde, and if you're Alliance, you'll replace this with a Vicious Gladiator's Insignia of Dominance. You'll then want to use the Dark Moon card Volcano. Now, as mentioned, when it comes to reforging, 
Your goal is to reforge everything to haste. This is your most valuable stat and you simply cannot get enough of it. So just make sure you stick to your hit cap. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not gonna change as the expansion progresses on. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PVP, so it's gonna be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PVP. Then head to the auction house where you're gonna pick up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from Peerless Stats is gonna be beneficial. You'll then grab Greater Speed for your bracers, Haste for your gloves, Earth and Vitality for your boots. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak is gonna be enchanted with light weave embroidery. This is mandatory if you're really trying to push on Warlock. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with powerful enchanted spell thread, and then put power torrent on your main hand and superior intellect on your offhand. Finally, don't forget to get an even steel belt buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be slotting in a burning shadow spirit diamond. This is going to provide you with some intellect and increase the amount of damage that your critical strikes deal. In your red slots, you have a couple of options. You can use Brilliant Inferno Ruby for more damage, or you can use Willful Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you need to be using Veiled Demon's Eye. This gives us hit along with a little bit of intellect for damage. And then in yellow slots, put Mystic Amber Jewel. This is going to give us a bit more resilience. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices to choose from. You want to go jewel crafting and tailoring, but you do have some flexibility here. Your first default pick is tailoring for Lightweave Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spell power buff, which we can snapshot with our dots. This can be crucial for landing kills during important windows, or we can save our CC for this proc. Jewel crafting is our second pick, and this is going to allow us to use the Chimera's Eye gems. We're going to use the Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience, but you can go with the brilliant Chimera's Eyes. This reduces our survivability quite a bit, but if you're confident you're not going to be targeted, then this can be a good option for some additional damage. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative to jewel crafting. It is technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it will be more stats in later seasons when we have access to epic gems. Your second alternative pick is engineering, and Unlike most classes, Affliction doesn't use an on-use trinket, so the engineering gloves don't share a cooldown with any other item in our equipment set. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you'll want focus macros for Death Coil, Fear, and Spell Lock. These are your main forms of CC and utility, so you're going to want to be able to reliably and quickly CC the healer during your damage windows. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1, 2, 3 macros for Death Coil, Fear, and Spell Lock. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. Now you should have your Soul Burn macros for both Health Stone and Fell Hunter. Soul Burn is not on the GCD, so you should pair it with these abilities. You should also have a party macro for Dark Intent, allowing you to instantly reapply this buff if it's purged. It's also a good idea to have a macro for Devour Magic. This is going to allow you to immediately purge your target, and you may want to also consider a Focus macro to purge the healer. Finally, you need to have a Cancel Aura Soul Swap macro. If you accidentally use Soul Swap before all your dots are on the target or the target gets dispelled, you can Cancel Aura the Soul Swap and it won't put the ability on cooldown. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.